So with that, I think we'll go to the next panelist. Uh, uh, I'm going to call Dr. Sri Ramurthy. Uh, he's from uh, Technium, and he's going to talk upon a very interesting topic called analytics. Even I am not aware of uh, it completely. Uh, I would like to uh, see what he's going to speak, uh, and I want you to pay attention and see what he has. Thank you very much. Um, it's a real pleasure to be here this afternoon. I think uh, between the people in this room, um, we probably have the ability to influence the thinking of uh, lakhs of students in this country. And it's a privilege to be speaking to you. Um, like uh, uh, Mr. Abhinath Reddy was saying, I would like to approach the angle of, approach employability from a different angle. This is the angle of educational analytics. Um, analytics is essentially looking at data and find, trying to find patterns in data and then acting on those patterns. Um, the fundamental belief, and some uh, speakers, uh, dignified speakers before me have uh, expressed this, what you can measure, you can improve. So in our institutions or even when you're self-learning, if you can measure what you know and what you have learned so far, what is the best thing to learn next, then you will be able to learn in a faster, more effective way. So there, in, in the industry today, other than education, in the industry, there is a lot of emphasis on looking at data, finding patterns in data, um, you know, words like uh, analytics, predictive analytics, big data, data mining, machine learning. These have become uh, you know, fairly popular words in the industry, not only in India, all over the world. There is uh, billions of dollars of business happening on these. Uh, but I believe, and we have believed for the last decade, that uh, um, you know, data has a lot of um, effect. Looking at the data has a lot of effect on how you can personalize education to an individual student, and also in matchmaking between the student and the industry. So what I would like to do today is to give you just four uh, case studies, uh, quickly, probably a minute for each, uh, to show you what, to show you an idea and what is being implemented elsewhere, and this is all very recent, 2012, 2013, and then talk about what we can do in our institutions or in our self-learning pursuits. The first... The first one is that quality institutions of the future must be data-driven. This is my belief. Uh, when we say da data-driven, we mean that Anyone who is making a decision in the institution should have the right data to support it and should make the decision in a rational way based on some data. And this could be the head of the institution or it could be a student who is deciding what class to take next or what, um, you know, whether to go towards being an entrepreneur to take up a job or further education. They need to have enough data about themselves and the environment before they can make the right decision. And uh, the example that uh, I'm show showing here is uh, one from uh, Arizona State University. I won't go into the detail of that graph. It is just to show you that something uh, exists. If you uh, go and look up, uh, you know, once you, uh, on Arizona State University and analytics, you will be able to see these on the internet. Basically, what they have done is built a campus-wide data collection and data reporting system. So anyone will be able to go on the uh, campus intranet and look at, let's say it's a professor who is trying to decide a class time. Then they will be able to see the data about the students, about the other classes, and take a decision appropriately based on data. If it's a head of the institution deciding where to invest a fund, where to invest a certain amount of money next year, or what companies to call for placement, they would have the necessary data available with them. This data doesn't come out of nowhere. The institutions, visionary institutions, need to make a move and say that I want to create a data infrastructure for my college or for my university or for my school. And um, we believed that this is very, very important. The data not only helps for internal things in the university or institution, but when your students are ready to take up a job, these, uh, this data, along with the students studying uh, data and patterns, can be made available to the industry and vice versa. Industry can seek the right candidates based on the data. 
and uh, this kind of matchmaking between the student and the uh, industry will, will increase the employability. The reason is because today the industry is choosing students uh, when they come to your campus probably based on a couple of days of interaction and probably based on a couple of numbers, your percentage or what you have done before. And that may not necessarily represent who you are, what your internal strengths are. I completely agree with Dr. Gupta that no student is bad. And there is a certain amount of data that you have captured about the student over a period of time. And if that is made available to the industry in a uh, easy and understandable form, then they can see which students' relative strengths are what and choose the right kind of uh, people. This is one um, example. And the second example I would like to give is for the students themselves. Um, you know, Doc, Mr. Raju has asked a very relevant question. Are you here by chance, a student in a course, is she here by chance or by choice? Today I see that it is a lot of the time by chance. Uh, it may be because the parents have influenced, uh, you know, someone else has influenced, or there is just a so societal pressure to become an engineer or a doctor. Because of those things, people end up in courses. Um, there have been, uh, you know, systems built. Uh, these are predictive analytics systems. I won't go into the technology part of it. This is essentially data mining that's happening here. So you look at what the student has studied, the kinds of marks that they have gotten over a period of time, and you look at the skill sets required for different professions. And at the school level, it could be as early as an upper primary level, or it could be secondary uh, school, you can make a decision or you can make a recommendation, a smart counseling on what professions are suitable for the mindset of the student. What, where does the passion of the student lie? And what is the... Um, what are the professions where the student is likely to be successful at based on past data? This is a rational decision that we can make. So there are such systems implemented at individual university level, and I have given an example of one system uh, which is in uh, a university in Arizona and the um, other institutions that are listed on the screen here. But to apply to India, I'm not saying that these systems are directly applicable as they are to the Indian context. We must work on uh, improving or you know, refining these systems to suit our needs. I believe that there is a, a, a lot of opportunity at the secondary school and upper primary school level to assess students not only on the basis of psychometric tests that are conducted once, but on the basis of data that is collected over a period of time, if such data, data uh, infrastructures exist. Um, to decide or to counsel them on the right kind of uh, you know, positions to go to, jobs to take up. This is the second utility of analytics. The third is um, to measure the learning impact itself. And here I would like to focus specifically on teacher training. A lot of institutions, government included, um, Sunita ji was uh, talking about the student-teacher ratio and the quality of teachers in uh, the colleges. Um, and uh, Mr. Raju was also mentioning all good teachers from JNTU are brought together and you know, they are being made available to the students. So it's absolutely important the, that we have teachers that have, we, that have the skill sets that um, learn continuously on their job. So for the teacher training programs, there are occasions, uh, there are um, examples, case studies globally where you have data mining applied to the teacher's performance data, the performance data before the training, and what has been imparted in the training, and what happens after the training, let's say in the next six months. And quantitatively, the impact of the teacher, uh, the impact of this training program on the teacher is measured. And I believe that such systems are a necessity given the amount of time and money that uh, government as well as private institutions in this country spend on training teachers, um, whether they are at the engineering level, a vocational institute level, or at the school level. So this is the third uh, example of the application of analytics. The la fourth one, and the final one in my presentation today, is uh, for self-learning. If I am a student who is, you know, today there is one difference between when I was studying and when um, I see students studying today is that enormous amount of learning resources are available to you at the click of a button. You have so much of, uh, you know, videos, e-learning courses, documents, etc., that are available to you. How do you know where you stand? 
where, I mean, through this whole maze of content available, do you just wander aimlessly or is there a way to go in a structured fashion and learn what it is that you want to learn? You set your goal and that goal translates to learning a few steps and at every point of time you can look at yourself and say, you can look about yourself, you can look at a dashboard which tells you that in this particular thing, in calculus, this is where you stand. You are, you know, 35 out of 100. This is not a score that is being given by a university. This is a self. Uh, this is only for your growth. And digital learning gives a lot of opportunities to measure the student. Um, and uh, uh, something has been said about this in uh, different areas. If you go and look at dig digital learning measurement tracking, you can find those details. I'm not going to go into it. But digital learning gives a lot more opportunity, in my opinion, than a classroom to measure students, especially when you want to teach a large number of students together. So we would like to make use of this data and customize education. I have written here a um, few examples of people doing this. Newton is the most well-known example, the last, you know, the bottom box there, where there's a large number shown, 295 million recommendations served. Uh, Newton makes recommendations based on a student's learning pattern a personalized recommendation that, you know, maybe it looks like you don't understand the fundamentals of probability from the test that you just took or from the lesson that you just studied. Why don't you go back and read this base material on probability? This kind of personalized recommendations to the student can be given when they are doing um, e-learning. And there are other companies that are doing, we ourselves are trying to be in, um, uh, you know, trying to make an impact in this space. And we are coming from a vocational skills perspective. Um, can we tell that this particular, um, say, worker in an assembly plant, if trained well, can become supervisor in the shortest amount of time compared to the other workers. Or this person seems to have an eye for quality, so he should be in the quality assurance team rather than the current team that she is in. And that kind of, uh, you know, personalized decisions, personalized recommendations can be done using analytics. Uh, all of these points I'm making in the context of my, uh, you know, title, which is that this is time for institutions and universities to look at collecting data and using that data for data-driven decision making instead of, um, you know, doing it through experience, through hunch. Experience and hunch are very good. I'm not saying the data is a replacement for it, but they get enriched when you have access to the real data. Things become much more accountable and measurable. measurable. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Dr. Sri Ramurthy Garu, that was a very interesting presentation. I guess uh, I'm curious to know how many of us uh, ask this question, what are we really passionate about, especially at a very early age in our career? Uh, most of us ask that question maybe uh, around 35 or 40, what do we want to do in life? I think we need to start asking that question very early in life, maybe when we are 15 or maybe even 10. You know, what am I passionate about in life? What do I want to do? And would, would I be successful in doing that? I mean, I, I mean, I think that slide was, I mean, it's revealing to me. I, mean, I, I never asked that question when I was very young, at least, you know. Um, I just took it by chance and not by choice. For the most part, I'm happy to be successful right now. But looking back, I think we can preach, even though we didn't practice. But uh, I think the generations have changed. I think the demands are more now. Uh, it's uh, We are operating in a global uh, globalized community where a lot is expected from you and you, you need to adapt yourselves. So I think it's very important to ask those two questions at least, in my opinion. I mean, what are we passionate about and are we good at it? Right. 